And actually there's a wonderful story, it's a true story, which I drew from an American medical journal, which I started the Healing Journey book with, um, a study which was done with um, two actors in America. They were doing two different plays. One was a very light-hearted play, which was a light comedy. The other was a very, very dark um, play about an assassin who was going to be executed the following morning. But both plays involved the same actors and actresses. They took blood samples before and after performances of, both, of all the actors and during rehearsals. They found that um, when the actors were involved in the light-hearted comedy, their immune functions actually increased when the blood samples were taken after the very, very dark and rather horrendous play about the execution, mm. a lot of the immune functions actually dropped. That's just play acting on a stage in front of an audience for an hour and a half. My point is, what does that do when you're engaging in that kind of behaviour as a part of your everyday life and it's going on day after day, week after week, month after month? That, to me, is the window that shows what starts to happen in the body and why so often people's bodies start to become ill. And that gets in a way, in our contemporary society, that gets harder and harder. There seems to be more and more demands on people's time. It's um, dis-ease, isn't it? And yeah. it's, um, I, I think you're right. And it's, um, I think you know, people say, well, why are certain diseases or certain illnesses on the increase? Um, it's got to be lifestyle in some way. There are, you know, there are certain diseases we have now which it would seem weren't around 50 or 100 years ago. And I personally think they are lifestyle related. And it seems that um, with the whole thing with the planet as well now, the, it's interesting, I read this article very recently about how we talked about obviously people having cancer in their body, how to some extent the human beings as such, or a lot of human beings, are becoming a cancer for the planet as such, our planet. It's like... We're getting to the stage now where the planet may have to start looking at clearing us out or some of us out because it's too much, it's too much burden. And that's what we do not only to the planet, but we do it individually to ourselves. And when I think it was, it's, I think that experience you had in the Himalayas was such an important experience about this complete interconnectedness of everything. Yes, absolutely. And um, I also feel strongly that um, nature has a way somehow of always finding some kind of balance. I think at the moment mankind is tipping it way out of kilter, but I think it will eventually find some kind of balance back. But um, you know, the tragedy is it's not just what we're doing to ourselves, it is what we're doing to every living thing on this planet. And there are reports which have now been coming out for the last 12 years or so, and I've seen reports even this year of um, fish in rivers and waterways in Britain that are... Uh, changing sex, male fish becoming female That's and right. vice versa. Yeah. And yeah. then we look at the statistics on um, hormonally driven cancers in human beings and we say, well, why is prostate cancer on the increase? Yeah. Why does there appear to be an increase in the levels of breast cancer or ovarian cancer? Is there any difference there really between that and what's happening to fish in the rivers? You know, a lot of it comes back to what we're doing to the planet. No, I, 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 I agree with that 100%. So we've got about three or four minutes left. In, in that time, can you kind of summarise any advice you can give to someone whose health is not so good? I know we, we've touched on certain angles anyway, but just what, what are their alternatives in terms of if they genuinely want to get healthy again or try to find some degree of health, what can they do? Well, I think, first of all, <clears throat> um, it's always got to be under medical supervision, but I think it's a matter of um, learning about de-stressing and I know everybody goes on about it but you know relaxation is something that's incredibly important I think people's lives now are becoming more and more compacted with spending more time under greater pressure at work or whatever it may be so I, th I think um, time management has something to do with it in finding other things to do I mean you, you were talking to me about protection as a healer one of the things that I've learned over the years is to have interest in life other than what I'm doing professionally. You can become very obsessed by it otherwise, and I think I would get stressed by it. So I love, for example, gardening. I go out in the garden and I switch off. I'm not thinking about the work that I do professionally. Yeah. It's that cut-off mechanism. Um, I think diet is another one, which is blindingly obvious. I think, you know, the, the facts are out there. We can see what poor diet is doing to us. Um, you know, so much of it is self-education. There's enormous evidence to show that humour and laughter 
is something which actually boosts our immune system and boosts immunity. And you know, I don't know, somehow as a society, we seem to become, <laughs> be, be becoming more serious. Yeah. Laughter is something which yeah. goes out. I think life's getting more complicated. We need to get back to something where it was simpler and more straightforward. And I don't know, I, I just think there's more dishonesty in the world. And I think because there's more dishonesty, I think it makes people tense. People are frightened of crime. It makes people tense. I think people are much less trusting of one another than maybe they used to be. And again, there's a lot of evidence to show that um, good social networking um, contributes to good health. You know, it's, it's no one thing, but I think maybe what we could do is to look back at what we were doing 50 years ago or 70 years ago, what we're not doing now and how we've lost it, and maybe how we could regain some of it. Yeah, we have the advantage these days of it's incredible to get information. You've got any medical condition, you pop it into the internet, and within 30 seconds you've got loads of information. Some, some may not be good information, but if you go disseminate it and go through it, you're going to find helpful information there. Sometimes it can be, but I always say to my patients when they first come to me, especially if they've been diagnosed with cancer, avoid going online looking for information because there is so much misinformation out there. Right. Like a lady I saw recently who was distressed by something she'd seen on the internet, a medical report. When I went and looked at it, it had been posted 11 years ago. It was totally out of date, but nobody had removed it. Yeah. So fear has come out of her looking at something online. Um, you know, you have to be aware that, you know, there are weaknesses in everything, even material you get on, online. But you're right, you know, we are, we've got more knowledge at our fingertips than we've ever had before, even for a lay person. It seems we've got the best of both worlds now because we've got fantastic normal medicine, medical treatment that we can have. They can do fantastic things. And we've got a wealth of information on what we can call alternative or complementary medicine. As we were saying earlier, if we can, if we can together use both, we've got, we've got the... That is the way it should be. Yeah. Everybody working together. Fusion, I thought was a rather nice word. I've yeah. heard it in restaurants. I haven't heard it in relation to health. <laughs> <laughs> integrated is the word that's being banded about now. It used to be complementary, but it's now integrated. integrated I like that. Yeah. OK, Matthew, we need to stop now. It's a fascinating story and I think a very positive end. So thank you for coming along and talking to us. And uh, thank you for watching Conscious TV. And we'll see you again soon. Goodbye.